Today we're on California's S1, otherwise known as the Sunrise Highway. And this highway is actually one of the very few national scenic byways in Southern California and makes a great day trip if you're in the San Diego area. So let's take a look at California's S1. Despite being only about 40 miles in length, California's S1 is one of the most scenic highways in Southern California. The S1 is located completely in San Diego County and stretches from State Route 94 near Campo in the south to State Route 79 near Lake Cuyamaca in the north. In this video we will be traveling from south to north. The S1 begins in the south at the intersection of Buckman Springs Road and State Route 94. It is here where you will find the only gas stations along the route as well as a Circle K and a subway. The southern section of the highway follows Buckman Springs Road until it reaches historic Highway 80. The S1 is also known as the Sunrise Highway, but only the northern portion of the route, the part that is north of Interstate 8, is officially designated as the Sunrise Highway. While the southern section of the highway isn't usually very crowded and does make a nice drive, there aren't a whole lot of places to stop on this portion of the road. The Pacific Crest Trail, the famous hiking and equestrian trail that goes from the Mexican border to the Canadian border, does travel pretty much the same route as the highway in this area, and there are a number of places where you can access the trail if you want, however. Eventually the S1 arrives at historic Highway 80, just east of the ghost town of Buckman Springs, and follows the same route as Highway 80 for a few miles. One interesting place to stop on the southern part of the S1 is the ghost town of Buckman Springs. We actually did a whole video on Buckman Springs, which I'll link in the description, but it's a pretty cool place to stop, check out some ruins, and maybe even find the grave of Amos Buckman. After Buckman Springs, the S1 continues to overlap Highway 80 for a few miles until you cross over Interstate 8. It is here where the S1 officially becomes the Sunrise Highway and where the road's National Forest Scenic Byway designation begins. It is also here where the S1 splits from Highway 80 again. Almost immediately after crossing over Interstate 8, the highway begins to climb into the mountains and it quickly becomes apparent what makes this road so special. The views you begin to see are amazing, but honestly, this part of the highway pales in comparison to what is coming up later. There are quite a few places to stop and admire the views, and this area is one of the closest places to San Diego that regularly gets snow in the winter, so you'll see plenty of signs warning people not to throw snowballs at cars at every stop. Continuing the drive, you'll pass through some large meadows, then eventually the area becomes much more forested. I should also point out that most of this drive travels through Cleveland National Forest, so if you decide to stop and get out of your vehicle, you do need to display a National Forest Adventure Pass. The National Park's America the Beautiful Pass works as well. If you don't have a pass, there are a few places to buy them along the route, which we'll get to shortly. While this is a great scenic drive by itself, there are quite a few places worth stopping and exploring along the way, so it's definitely worth it getting the pass. As of the making of this video, it costs $5 for a day pass, or $30 annually. This overlook across the street from the Sunset Trailhead is a great place to look for wildlife in the mornings and the evenings, and is a very popular picnic spot, and an extremely popular spot when it snows. And if you're interested in going for a hike, the Sunset Trailhead is a great starting off point for a number of different hiking trails. I think one of my favorite things about driving the Sunrise Highway is how it builds. You do get some pretty great views right away, but as you continue on the road, the views just keep getting better and better. It's almost hard to believe that this is less than an hour from downtown San Diego. I can't stress enough what a great drive this is, especially if you just want to get out of the city. The entire drive isn't all wilderness though, as eventually you'll come to the small settlement of Mount Laguna, which is a great place to grab a bite to eat. 
The Pine House Cafe first opened in 1942 and serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The owners are French, so there's quite a bit of French-inspired cuisine on the menu, along with the standard fare you'd expect to find at a mountain cafe. On this visit, I had the beef stew, and it was amazing. We highly recommend stopping here if you're in the area and you're hungry. Not far from the Pine House Cafe is the historic Laguna Mountain Lodge and Store. The Laguna Mountain Lodge is one of several places where you can get a cabin to stay the night on the Sunrise Highway, with another being the Blue Jay Lodge right across the street. The Laguna Mountain Lodge also has a post office and a store where you can buy groceries. You can also buy a National Forest Adventure Pass here. Across the street from the lodge is the Laguna Mountain Visitor Center. You can also purchase a National Forest Adventure Pass here. This is a great place to get information on the area and pick up a trail map if you plan on doing any hiking. And if you have kids with you, it's a great place to stop as there's a number of activities for kids to do at the Visitor Center as well. Almost immediately across the street from the Visitor Center is the Desert View Picnic Area. This is a great place to have a picnic, but what makes it really incredible is it is your first chance on the S1 to get an amazing view of the Anza Borrego Desert. But if you don't have time to stop here, don't worry, there are some even better views of the desert still to come. As you continue to travel up the Sunrise Highway, the breathtaking views of the Anza Borrego Desert below are now a constant companion. The views are absolutely stunning on this part of the drive. However, to get what in our opinion is the very best view on the Sunrise Highway does take a bit of a hike. The Garnet Peak Trail goes to the top of Garnet Peak which sits at about 6,000 feet elevation. Depending on where you park the trail can be as short as about 2.3 miles though the last bit of it is fairly steep. This is by far our favorite hike in the area and when you get to the top you are rewarded with some absolutely incredible views. If hiking isn't your thing though, not to worry. There are some easily accessible viewpoints along the road that will absolutely blow you away. One such overlook is at Kwai Mee Point, which you can drive right up to. So right now I'm at the Kwai Mee Overlook, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I try to look it up to see what the correct pronunciation for Kwai Mee is, but I wasn't able to actually find anything, so I do apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But right now we're at the Kwai Mee Overlook, and not only does this place have some amazing views, it's also a great place if you're a fan of old abandoned roads because right here, what is now the Pacific Crest Trail, was the original alignment of the Sunrise Highway. And we're gonna take a walk down it and take a look at the old abandoned part of the Sunrise Highway, which is now the Pacific Crest Trail where Thousands of hikers every year make their way from Mexico to Canada on. And as I mentioned, this was the original alignment of the Sunrise Highway. They moved it to the west because of the number of rock slides that were happening on this part of the highway. And as you can see, today, rock slides are still quite a problem. In addition to the old road, at Kwai Mee Point you'll also find a large number of memorials along the trail. There is easily at least a hundred of them. Here's an old retaining wall and you can see where the railings were from when this was in use for cars. And there are just some amazing views from here down into the Anza Borrego Desert below. Most of the old road is gone, but you can still find traces of it here and there. You can definitely see what an issue the rock slides would have been on the old road. Did I mention how great the views are from Kwai Mee Point as well? After Kwai Mee Point, you start heading to a slightly lower elevation and there are far less trees. After a bit, you'll come across the Pedro Feyas Trail Monument, which is another good place to get access to several area hiking trails. 
The monument honors Spanish Colonel Pedro Feas, who was said to be the first European to see some of the land in the area when he went after some army deserters. Though I guess that begs the question, wouldn't the deserters have been the first Europeans to see some of this land? And I mentioned the hiking trails in the area, but this is also a really good place if you're looking for a good mountain biking trail. After the Pedro Feas Monument, the Sunrise Highway is just about at its end. The northern terminus of the S1 is where it hits California State Route 79, a few miles northeast of Lake Cuyamaca. From here you can take the 79 north to the town of Julian, which is a very popular tourist destination, or what a lot of people do is head south on the 79 through Cuyamaco Rancho State Park to make the drive a loop. Whichever way you decide to go, you can't really go wrong. So that's our look at California's S1, the Sunrise Highway. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.